So let's talk a little bit about loops. So the first problem that I want to talk about is, let's say that we want to print some number of times that the user defines this, the message welcome to Java. So we ask the user, uh, enter N, and based on the value of N, we are going to print welcome to Java N times. The user can enter one, two, 10, 100. There is no way that we can implement it uh, without a loop because one way is actually to do an if statement that says, if it's one, system out print ln once. Else, if it's two, system uh, out print ln twice. But you can't do this a hundred times, no? Because that basically it's bad programming. You have a lot of code for not much. So the other way to do it is to actually use a loop. Five lines of code that actually will print this for any n. You start with defining a variable count, initializing it with zero. Then while the count is less than n, execute system out print ln welcome to Java and increment the count with one. What happens, it goes back and retests the condition. Is count still less than n? Yes, one is still less than, let's say, 10. Then it prints again. It exits the moment that the count becomes equal with n and this condition is false because count less than n is not strictly less than n. So that's exactly what, it's like a, the same syntax with if statements, but the keyword for if is replaced by while, and now it became a loop. So a loop or an iteration is basically repeating a set of instructions a certain number of times or until some specific condition result is achieved. Like for instance, a condition becomes false. And initially in original like assembly programming languages, you had instructions like, like A, B, and then a conditional jump. Uh, instruction C, uh, C is a jump back to A or a conditional jump. If some condition was uh, true, go back to A, otherwise just continue. So iteration is basically a short code, which actually if you unfold it, it becomes longer and dynamically longer because it really, and only at runtime, it will know if it has to jump back or it can continue. So why do we reuse iteration? Because a lot of problems actually resolve to iteration. And the best example, for that is probably n factorial. So n factorial is actually, if you think about it, there are two definitions. One is an iterative definition and one is a recursive definition. n factorial is n minus one factorial multiply with n. But we are looking at the iterative definition. So what is n factorial? Is one multiplied with two, multiplied with three, multiplied with four, up to multiplied with n. So this is really an iteration. We want to go from one to n, one step at a time and multiply each factor to a product. Without iteration, if the user would enter n and then we'll have to compute factorial, we'll have to have a separate formula for every factorial. Like one factorial is equal with one, zero factorial is equal with one, two factorial is equal with two multiply with one, three factorial is equal with three multiply with two multiply with one and so on. Very inefficient code, because again, if the user enters 50, you would have to have 50 such if statements and check each one of them up to the one that you get for 50. So the iterative version with loops is very simple. We start with reading that uh, input from the, uh, input uh, scanner. Then we define factorial equal with one, that's the product. We define i is equal with one, while i is, i is less than n, the value that was read, the factorial, the old factorial product is multiplied with i and we post increment y with one. So it starts one multiplied with one, two multiplied with one, three multiplied with two, because basically it adds every uh, uh, number i to the same product factorial. So Java has three types of basic iterative statements, while loops, do while loops, and for loops. And then later when we learn about objects, 
we will learn that there is also uh, an enhanced for loop that can iterate over every object in a collection. They can do similar things, and it's a matter of preference which one you use because they are equally uh, expressive. We'll start with while loops. So the while loop looks synthetically like an if statement. The only difference is the keyword while replaces the keyword if before. So while some condition, logical condition, executes loop body, basically a block. So in this example, you can see that if the loop is true, it executes and then comes back to check the condition. If it's false, it continues with the rest of the statements after. So for instance, if you want to print a hundred times, welcome to Java, you start with initializing the counter with zero and then while the counter is less than 100, print welcome to Java, increment the counter. So this will go 100 times. When the counter becomes 100, 100 less than 100 is false, and it finishes by printing exactly 100 times welcome to Java. So here we can actually trace it for two. So the count is zero, zero less than two is true. We print once welcome to Java, increment the count to two, to one, sorry, from zero to one. One is less than two is also true. Print again the second time, increment the count to two. Two less than two is false. Continue with the rest after the while statement. So that's how a while statement is executed. One thing that to be careful about is that although here we used less than, you can all use any logical condition, including equality or, or inequality. The problem with that is that real numbers are not exact. So let me show you this code and then we'll discuss about it in detail next time. We don't have any more time today. So one thing that I'm gonna do is print the, res the, the item inside here. And I'm going also to change this sign to greater than zero. So run it. And one thing that you can see is that we started with something that was one, and then we subtracted minus 0 0.1 at every step. But after two steps, we already see that these are not exact values. It's not 0 0.7, it's 0 0.7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, followed by it eventually by one. And that the reason for that is that real numbers are not exact. There is a standard representation of real numbers, but they are not exact. So the problem is that if we used here not equal, when we were at this number, this is zero point, because you see exponent minus 16 is zero point followed by 16 zeros, and then one, three, eight, and so on. So basically what this tells us is that we can't use equality to compare or inequality to compare reals. We, we can only use greater than less than signs. Because if we use inequality, like it was here in this code, it will go in an infinite loop because that number was different than zero and now it goes into negatives. That's basically all that I want to cover today and we'll cover the rest of the loops next time. The homework only asks questions about uh, if statements and normal print statements. So this is something that will be tested in the next homework. That's all for today. Thank you very much. See you next class. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Thank you Professor. Professor. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you, Professor. Oh, professor.